Hi, welcome to this presentation, which is a, an overview of building services engineering industry and also the college courses that we run at Leeds College of Building. My name's Richard Lees and I'm the curriculum manager at the college and I'm going to run through very briefly the, the, the industry, uh, the skills required to work in the industry and, and what you may be good at at school and what you've enjoyed at A-level or at GCSE and how that would fit in with, with what we do in building services engineering. A very quick overview on the units and what qualification options we run at the college in terms of HE higher education uh, and then look at the pathways and career options that you that you may have if you wanted to become a building service engineer and then a very quick look at the college in terms of building services uh, the building and the facilities so what is building service engineering it's a it's a building services is a form of engineering that's kind of overlooked and people are unfamiliar with it and unfamiliar with with what it does and unless you sort of work in the industry or you know someone who works in the industry it, it kind of goes under the radar a little bit so building services is essentially making the building work and making the building work for the people that live in there or work in the building um, i've used an image there the, the leeds general infirmary which is a, a project that i was on a long time ago the jubilee wing um, and you can imagine as a hospital it's, it's just a shell the construction part is just a shell the architects do the design part and make it look how the client wants um, and then the building services our role then is to, to make the building work and you can imagine inside a hospital it's not just heating ventilation lighting there's all sorts of specialist areas and specialist rooms that have to perform a job and have to make the building work and again every building is different from prisons hospitals schools they all have different needs, uh, but ultimately keeping, you know, making the building work and keeping the occupants comfortable, able to do the job, what the building's built to do. Um, and a lot of that is kind of behind the scenes and, and you very rarely see sort of the pipe work and the duct work and the ventilation that's involved in that. But that's what the engineer does. Um, to be able to, to do that uh, and be a building service engineer, there's lots of maths involved and that doesn't mean it's all maths. So please don't sort of go away thinking, well, it's all about maths and I'm no good at maths. It, it, maths is part of it, but it's science based. It's lots of physics in there, pressures, fluids, electrical principles. Um, I put a very quick example there of heat loss. So that's a, a way just to give you an idea of some of the maths. You know, it's a very simple multiplication there, but understanding as well what those variables are. So what goes into that? U values are looking at the type of wall and is it an energy efficient wall? Does it have lots of insulation in there and so on? looking at being able to calculate the area of the wall and then the difference in temperature and, and some of those variables will change so it's not just the maths part it's understanding what those are for example u value will change from building a very modern building will have very modern high very low sorry u values that, that are, are given through legislation to try and prevent heat loss and there's lots about climate change and co2 and that's a big part of building service engineering is to make buildings energy efficient now nowadays um, so making the system work but use as less energy as possible to meet various targets and, and co2 emissions uh, being able to calculate there with the wall and then the difference in temperature could be the design temperature inside could vary so if it's a restaurant or an office block a hospital that would vary knowing what those are and where to find those figures and then thinking about where the building is so is it in the middle east it could be in dubai lots of building work going on in the middle east it could be in scotland it could be in london it could be anywhere in the world where you get different temperatures and obviously that would affect your calculations in terms of your building services design so that just gives you an idea and that's an example of how you calculate heat loss going from a room you know you've then got a building made up of several rooms hundreds of rooms being able to calculate the heat loss how big the radiator the air conditioning the convectors need to be and then calculating the pipe work the pumps it's all going to work and make that system efficient but being able to work and of course be able to be controlled in terms of the college um, and, and where we teach um, in terms of HE that's higher education we, we'd start on an HNC so that's a higher national certificate level four in building service engineering you can see the example of units there there's three mandatory units and then we have the specialist units that we bring in which are specialized to to the industry to building services um, and then the natural progression from hnc is to hnd level five the hnc level four is is the equivalent to a, a foundation degree so the first year of a foundation degree level five 
and then level six would be degree. Um, currently, we're in talks with validating a level six qualification. So if you were to do a an HNC with us or an HND with us, by then, you know, by the time they came to completing that, you, there would be a natural progression to level six, which would be a BS science degree, bachelor in science degree. Um, most of the units are coursework, so they're all coursework based, but what we try to do is, is mix up a variety of assessment methods. So we could have presentations in there, we could have some time assignments in there, we've tried to put more practicals experiments in there, so rather than you just get to theory, um, actual user, user systems and user equipment that we've got in the lab to, to actually have a go at yourself. Just in terms of careers, the sort of three main types of a career that in building service engineer would work in. So it could be design, most commonly design. So you work for a company that gets given a brief from a client. So it could be a school, it could be a health authority once in a hospital or a health centre built. It could be a prison, it could be um, an office block, a private client wanting an office block or a, a restaurant, hotel. Um, and from that, you then design the system. And what generally happens is you specialise in a particular area. So you might specialise in lighting design, you might specialise in ventilation and cooling design, depending on who you work for. Um, and it's about putting that design together, putting all the drawings together and putting the, the equipment required and, and sizes required. The design consultant role is more of a, a check. So that's taking the designs in from, it could be a variety of companies or your own company. And then it's looking at that and making it better. Does it work, first of all? Can I make it better? Can I make it cheaper? Can I make it more energy efficient? As an example there, some modelling. So you might do some modelling using software where you're looking at the shadowing, the heat, depending on where the sun is and so on. So hopefully when the building's built, it's going to work and it's going to work how we expect it to. And then building services site engineer. So this is actually site-based. So you're out on site, you're taking the designs and they're being installed. So we'd have tradespeople installing them, but you're there to, to sort of guide them solve any problems that come come along uh, that the designers have not seen in the office um, and then hoping that the project goes in on time um, and on budget. The college itself um, for building services is, is predominantly based at our South Park 2 Hunslet campus which is brand new purpose-built building. It's great for building services because we have all the workshops so we have the heating event workshops, the refrigeration workshops are in there. We've also got involved with the design of the building. So we've, we've, we've asked that we can get access to plant rooms and the system so we can use the actual working system to see examples of ductwork, heat exchangers, boilers, hair handling units and so on. Um, and then we've also had a lab. So we've, we've put a lab in there. We've spent lots of money on equipment uh, that we're using there for the experiment part. So it's not just theory, it's actual hands-on getting involved. Very personal. So. The classes are capped at 20, so there'll be no more that it's not like university where you'll have 150 in a lecture theatre. It's very personal, you get to know your tutors, you have the same tutors for each unit each week. There's an open door policy with the staff, so you can come in, you can ask them any questions you need after the, the lessons. You're very welcome to ask for extra support and we'll, we'll, we'll try as best to, to catch up and accommodate where we can. Staff are all industry trained, so we've all been in industry, we've all worked, we're not academics, we've all worked in the industry and, and gone into teaching following that. So we've got experience of, of the industry and so on. So thank you for listening. Um, hopefully that's given you a, a very brief insight into the building service industry. Hopefully you're raring to go and become a, a building service engineer. If you do have any questions, please feel free. There's contact name and, and email on there. Please ask any questions that you've got through, through the email or, or contact the college and speak to one of us in the building services team. But thank you for listening.